Hello. <laughs> so now we're going to talk about the difference between sterilizing and pasteurizing. Normally with our bulk substrate, we want to pasteurize because this will give our mycelium a better chance of actually growing really healthy. This means that we're not killing all of the microbes and bacteria, kind of like your gut microbiome that allows you to have like a harmonious symbiotic relationship between microbes and help digest all of like the things in your gut. Um, it's kind of similar with our substrate. We want to leave about 20% of the microbes in our substrate so that they can actually team up with our mycelium and help it grow. Because think about this in the natural world, uh, we're not normally isolating mycelium in the soil. It has like a lot of other microbes, yeast, bacteria, and other symbiotic beings that allow it to grow really healthy and strong. So that is why we choose pasteurization for this step. Also remember that in the previous stage, we have our grain spawn, which is full of sugars and good carbohydrates for our mycelium, meaning that at this stage it has grown into like its most nutritious food source and we don't need such a nutritious food source um, to bulk it up. So that's why we use straw, which is definitely less high in sugars and in carbohydrates than our grain. And to pasteurize, you have a few different options depending on if you have a more equipped kitchen or if you want to do this in a more sustainable and low-tech way, there's also a cold water pasteurization that you can do. We'll start with the more conventional practice, which is to just boil our substrate for a few hours. And depending on the amount of substrate that you are pasteurizing, you may choose also different alternatives because obviously here we have a cooking pot and it's only allowing us so much volume of space that we can fill with our substrate. And here I'm just using about 500 grams, not even, or if this was 500 milliliters actually, I measured it at for volume and not for weight in this case. And I have this mesh bag that is just a veggie bag for the grocery store. Um, you can use any other kind of mesh bag. You just want something that you can easily squeeze the extra water out of at the end of the pasteurizing uh, period. And also that can penetrate fully your substrate because you want everything to be fully submerged, soaked and uh, boiling for at least a couple of hours. And here I also have this double boiler, which just will allow me to lift the uh, substrate out once it's done and allow it to drain and cool so that I can handle it later better and squeeze out the remaining water using this bag. You definitely don't need this. I just so happen to have this double boiler, so I'm going to use it for this practice. Let's fill up our pot with water. Again, depending on where you are in the world and what the quality of water is in your bioregion, you may choose to um, pre-boil your water or filter it, um, but normally this isn't a necessary step. We want to make sure we fill the pot so that it covers completely the substrate bag. So let's try it. Let's put our double boiler. Ooh. So we can add maybe a little bit more water, making sure that it's all nice and cozy in there. And if we want to keep it down, you can also use a weight or a rock or stone to keep this uh, fully submerged while it's boiling, which is important because that means that all of the substrate is being pasteurized. Perfect. And we'll bring that to a boil, close the lid, and have that on for a few hours. So this is option number one. You'll have this boiling for a few hours and then turn it down, let it cool. Obviously, please, safety first. Don't handle this while it's hot. Um, 
dispose of your water or reuse it for your garden, whatever permaculture you're practicing in your home. Um, and then wring out the rest of the water in your substrate. You want to find the perfect um, field capacity. What we mean by field capacity is when I squeeze out my substrate, there should be like maybe one or two drops coming out, but it shouldn't be super soaked because this is going to make in your substrate bag, in your jar or wherever it is that you're going to put the substrate next, it's going to make that process very humid, very wet. And what do we know about humid and wet pools? They cause accumulation of bacteria, yeast, and propagation of other fungi that are competing for the food source of our mycelium. So making sure that we find the correct field capacity and this you may have to um, do by hand and just really um, practice a few times until you understand, you know, oh, okay, I, when I squeeze it really hard, there's only like one or two drops coming out, perfect amount of humidity. So we're going to do a second type of pasteurization and I really like this type of pasteurization because it's easily accessible um, if you can find gal or um, hydrated lime, uh, slack lime, or calcium hydroxide. I just gave you a bunch of names for the same thing, just depending on where you are, it may be called something different. Um, but it should be fairly easy to find if you, for instance, I do natural dyes and that is something that we use to alter pH and change color in natural dyes, but also it's used uh, to change the pH in uh, gardening and permaculture. So maybe there is a gardening store near you that might carry this or definitely online. It's also easy to find. The reason why I think that this is such a cool way to pasteurize is that just by changing the pH of the water and changing the pH of the substrate, um, you will raise the pH really quickly to about 13. At that point, you will kill um, the majority, like about 80% of the microbes, yeast and bacteria that are residing um, either in the water that your substrate is soaking in or in the substrate itself. You conserve energy by doing this because you're not using fire, gas, boiling, the substrate in any way. Yeah, it's a really easy way to also do large amounts of substrate because you can do this in just like a big uh, cylinder drum if you have that uh, and you can do this outdoors. So you don't need like a sterile indoor space to do this method. So first what we're going to do, normally if you have a big amount of substrate here, we're just using a tiny bit for this demo. So I have just put it into this measuring vessel, but really if you're going to do anything bigger, you would use a mesh bag as I showed in the previous uh, section where we talked about pasteurizing by boiling. So you would put all of your substrate in a mesh bag that can carry the volume of substrate that you want to um, pasteurize and then find a large enough vessel to put water enough to um, cover the substrate fully. And again, if your substrate is floating to the top of the water, finding something heavy to weigh it down is really important because it needs to be fully submerged and soaking, especially when you're working with cold water rather than warm water. It just takes a little bit longer for the water to soak into all of the fibers that are in your substrate. So it tends to float for a little bit longer. Voila, so we filled this all the way up. There's some little bits floating because it's kind of like free floating in this space. But if you have your substrate properly in a mesh bag, then you won't really have this problem. You can just put uh, something weighted if you find that it's floating. And you don't need very much, like about a 6% to water ratio of calcium hydroxide is Perfect, you want to make sure it's like mixed really well. Another way that I have um, heard people measuring this um, who don't have, you know, ways of weighing things necessarily or doing this just more 
by feel, by hand, and by experience. It's like if you put your finger in, you should be able to see the tip of it. But um, this I wouldn't recommend so much because calcium hydroxide obviously can irritate your skin. So be very careful, especially if you have sensitive skin when you're doing this process um, to use gloves, especially if you're submerging the entire, an entire bag of substrate into a, a tub of water with your hands. This technique, the only like contradiction to this is that well, first of all, you should definitely be wearing a mask when you do this because of like the volatile or like airborne particles that are you're breathing in. It's definitely, it's a mineral chemical, but still you don't want to be breathing that in. Um, and secondly, that some mycelium does not thrive in high pH. So what's going to happen here is that we're going to raise the pH really high, right? So let's actually test that right now. I have some pH strips right here. This one only goes to about 11, but really we want this to about 13. So since this is the highest, let's just compare it with the highest. Once we let this sit overnight for at least 12 hours, uh, you're going to take it out and not rinse it, but just, if it's in a bag, again, you're gonna squeeze out the rest of the water or you can strain this with a mesh strainer or if you have a lot of substrate, you can actually put a mesh textile around a frame that it is enough to have a thin layer of your, your substrate on there so that it can um, release any excess moisture, excess water, and it can dry a little bit before you take it on to the next stage. At that point, you have a small uh, window of time where no other competing microbes or bacteria are going to be growing on here. But as it dries, if you leave it for uh, longer than like a few hours or while it's drying, definitely it like airborne yeast and bacteria are going to land back on there and any that can survive the lowering the pH as it lowers back to neutral are going to start to propagate there. So this is like a very timely process and you do need to be kind of having a free afternoon to do this process and then the next day to dry it out and immediately inoculate your substrate. Um, the other thing that I wanted to mention is that this might be something that if you're trying a new strain might actually kill your mycelium. So you may have to do this as, you know, like do it with a small amount of substrate at first so that you're not wasting materials, time, energy, um, and having something fail. Um, and try it with one of the mycelium strains that you know will work, like oyster, like reishi. We have allowed our substrate to pasteurize for a few hours and it has cooled. So now we're going to strain it and let it dry. Um, you don't want it to be fully dry. You still want it to be holding a little bit of moisture. So just allowing it to dry for uh, maybe an hour or so, depending on how much substrate you have is perfect. Once you've allowed the substrate to strain a little bit, you can squeeze out some of the remaining water. If it's pretty dry, if you feel like you can squeeze out most of the water with this mesh bag, sometimes that's possible. If you only have a tiny bit of substrate like here, you can actually just squeeze out the extra water till your reach field capacity. Like as you can see, I can just wring out most of the water. If you have lots of substrate, again, you might wanna use either a mesh colander or a mesh, a large mesh screen on a frame. So once this is at field capacity, this and cooled, this is ready to inoculate. Voila, that's all.